Warren Buffett, one of the most successful investors in the world, says gold is not a good investment. I purchased this gold biscuit when I was in Dubai because at the time I thought it would be a good investment. Was I wrong? If I was wrong about gold, what about property? Warren Buffett says real estate is a lousy investment. Is this right? Was I wrong again? Please do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button. It helps me more than you think. Why does Warren Buffett say gold is not a good investment? Warren Buffett considers gold to be an un productive asset because it pays no dividends or interest. He was once quoted in saying that it literally just sits there and looks at you. I was shocked to learn that Warren Buffett has invested almost $1 billion in silver. Silver is a precious metal just like gold. So I couldn't understand why he was investing in silver but not gold. Warren Buffett states in his Principles of Investing that you should only invest in things that are useful and that serve some purpose and that supply some practical need that people have. What I discovered was that Warren Buffett likes silver because it meets his principles of investing. For example, silver has medical and industrial uses. Silver is used in medicine, in bandages, in catheters, and as a healing agent for burns and other conditions. It's also used for water purification. In electronics, silver is the best metal conductor of electricity and doesn't corrode. It's used extensively extensively in wiring and conductive parts, computers, mobile phones, and cameras. So silver has real identifiable value and it's very difficult to find an alternative or substitute for it. Gold has some industrial uses, but it's replaceable with other metals. Gold makes pretty jewelry, but in reality, it doesn't have many practical uses. My gold biscuit. I purchased this gold biscuit when I was in Dubai on my credit card because it was tax free and I thought it must be worth more in the UK. So my initial plan was to sell this biscuit when I got home back to the UK. What really happened was that I hid it away and totally forgot about it until recently, at which point I thought I would look at how much it had gone up in value compared to what I'd paid for it. So I purchased this gold biscuit when the price per gram was 29.57 and currently gold is trading at 48 pounds and 50 pence price per gram. That means that the gold biscuit has gone up 64%. So was Warren Buffett wrong? When I tried to sell this biscuit recently, I have to admit it was a bit of a nightmare. I was calling around different jewelers asking if they would buy the biscuit. Some said no and others said that I would have to bring it in so they could value it. A few jewelers did say what they would be prepared to pay for it but also said it was subject to seeing the biscuit as well. No doubt when I went into the jewelry shop the price would have come down. I actually managed to find jewelers in St Albans who were willing to buy the gold biscuit for a lot more which I thought was strange but I did double check on the phone if it was the buying price and not the selling price and the lady confirmed it was. I jumped in my car and drove all the way to St Albans. I parked near the jewelers in an alleyway which just felt so unsafe but it was the closest parking spot to the shop. I then started hunting around for the biscuit as I couldn't remember whether I'd put it in my coat pocket or in my bag and my heart dropped thinking I'd left it at home or even worse dropped it somewhere. Luckily I found it. I then held on to it for dear life as I left the car. In that moment I felt like everyone was watching me and felt like maybe someone was following me. Talk about an overreactive imagination. I got to the shop, walked straight into the door as it didn't open and you had to be buzzed in and then proceeded to the counter. I said to the lady I'd spoken to a lady on the phone and that I'd come to sell a gold biscuit. I actually felt like she thought I must have found it or even worse taken it from somewhere. Anyway eventually the lady came out asks to take the biscuit away for analysis and then comes back with a yellow post-it note with a price on it. The price was a lot less than the price that was quoted on the phone and I asked why and she said sorry I gave you the selling price and not the buying price. I said to her I did ask if that was the case and she said sorry she had made a mistake. I couldn't believe it. I was so upset and annoyed. I had traveled all this way for nothing and the final price they offered me was actually less than some of the other shops had offered. So I decided to leave it. I took the biscuit and left and now my imagination was in overdrive. I thought maybe the jewelers had sent someone to follow me as I left the shop. So I was very nervous about going back to my car, which was in an alleyway. I was literally running to my car. I got in as quickly as I could and drove out of there like I was a getaway driver. The whole experience was a nightmare. I didn't understand 
understand why people would want to buy lots of gold. It's a physical commodity that you need to be able to store safely and insure. And one thing I forgot to mention was that some jewelers were asking if the biscuit was in its original packaging, which it was, and then they were saying that they would need to take a scrape of the biscuit to make sure it was genuine. I wasn't sure how another jeweler would feel if I took the gold bar into them after having it removed from the original packaging and scraped. Honestly, the only upside of gold seems to be that the fact that it's more liquid than other investments. So compared to property, for instance. But the biggest issue seems to be storage, insurance, and a lack of leverage. I actually looked at the change in the average house price over the same period when I purchased the gold biscuit to now. And you know what I found? The average house price went up 65% in the same period. So more or less the same increase. So on paper, it would seem that gold and property have gone up by the same amount. I had actually purchased a property at the same time when I purchased the gold biscuit. So I thought it would be interesting to see how much that went up by. That had actually increased in value by 79%. So is property really a lousy investment? Why does Warren Buffett say real estate is a lousy investment? Warren Buffett feels that developed real estate is priced accurately most of the time. The way in which Warren Buffett has made his vast fortune is by putting money into companies that are underpriced and poised for growth. But that strategy doesn't translate well into a market where Warren Buffett feels there simply aren't bargains to be had. Does that mean we should all stay away from property investing? One of Warren Buffett's core piece of advice Warren Buffett gives actually applies to property investing as well. But while it's easy to see why Buffett might opt to stay away from real estate investing, that doesn't mean you should too. In fact, one of Buffett's core principles of advice actually applies quite well to property investing. Buffett has famously said that you shouldn't own a stock for 10 minutes if you don't intend to own it for 10 years. But while that buy and hold approach certainly works well within the context of choosing stock, it applies to property investing as well. The value of property rises over time. What Warren Buffett was missing was the B for our property investing model. What is property investing? At its basic level, it involves buying a property to let out for the long term for which you earn a monthly cash flow, which is the difference between the rent you receive and the mortgage payments and the long term capital appreciation. Long term capital appreciation means the value of the property increases over time. It's an asset class that is in short supply and demand it's for its only increasing. This means that over time its value increases, which means you have the opportunity of remortgaging a buy to let at its higher value, therefore releasing some capital from the property to use either to invest in more property or choose to spend as you wish. How does it work? I used to be a traditional or armchair property investor, something which I think Warren Buffett didn't like about property. I would buy a three bedroom house to rent out for the monthly cash flow and long-term capital appreciation. For example, I purchased this three bedroom house in Birmingham for 84,000 pounds. I put down a 25% deposit, so it cost me 21,000 pounds. I spent 10,000 pounds refurbishing this property and spent 1,500 pounds on legal fees. So all in, this vanilla buy to let cost me £32,500. I rented this house out at £575 per calendar month. The monthly mortgage payments were £314 per month, which meant that on a monthly basis, the cash flow on this particular property was £260. The gross yield on this investment was 8.21%. The money left in was £32,500. And so the return on investment was 10%. So to recap, on a monthly basis, I was getting cash flow from the property without having to put my time into this property as I had it managed by a letting agent. And over time, the value of this property would go up as house prices tend to double every 10 years on average. What Warren Buffett would like is the B4R property investing model I developed. Using the B4R property investing model, I'm able to buy properties at a lot of value and then recycle as much money as possible to use for the deposit for the next property. This has allowed me to buy properties in a way which is much faster, requires a lot less money, than the traditional way of investing in property and the way I used to invest. B4R stands for buy, reconfigure, refurbish, rent and refinance. For example, the B4R strategy allowed me to purchase this house and convert it into two flats with each flat costing me £21,000. What I did, I purchased this three bedroom house for £265,000. My plan was to create two flats 
one upstairs and one downstairs. And what really attracted me to this house was that it had two entrances. And so I thought I could utilize those in order to create two separate flats, each with their own entrances. I had seen some houses that I could convert into two flats, but I wasn't keen on creating a communal area. And I really liked the separate entrances and thought that these would be more appealing. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I had seen some houses locally that had been converted into flats, but the quality of finish was very questionable. So I started to view properties with two separate entrances and then started to make a list of all the criteria the local council would look for when giving me planning permission to do the conversion. I created a checklist and, and used this criteria and went shopping. This was no different to the criteria I created when I was looking for one bedroom apartments I could convert into two bedroom apartments in central London, viewing the property. When I went to view this property, it was occupied by a family who were looking to move to a bigger house. The property was in good condition, so not usually what I'm looking for. I'm usually looking for tired and dated properties, but in this instance, the owner wanted to move quickly and we agreed to purchase the house for £265,000. The house was originally on the market for £275,000, so not much of a discount compared to what I'm usually used to negotiating. But the floor plan worked, it ticked all the boxes on my criteria checklist, and I really like the location and feel of the area. There was no tick box for this, but a very important feeling you get when investing in property before floor plans. As you can see from the before floor plans, the two separate entrances meant that I could create a separate entrance for each flat. The ground floor flat would be accessed by the door on the left hand side and have access to the garden at the back. The first floor flat would be accessed by the door on the right hand side where it says existing porch. You would enter into the porch and then go upstairs after floor plans. The floor plans you are seeing on screen is what our architect recommended, but we subsequently changed these to take advantage of the separate entrances. There was so much back and forth regarding the communal and separate entrances, but I'm glad we kept the entrances separate. No communal areas to keep clean and look after, and no reports of any missing post or lost items before photos. I just want to show you photos of the property just before and during the refurbishment after photos. I just want to show you some photos once the conversion was complete. We created an open plan kitchen diner and we used an interior designer to ensure we use the space well, looking at aspects such as lighting, furniture selection and color palettes. I feel this really helped to create a modern apartment with lots of space and storage with well chosen bespoke furniture. The first floor flat had a really nice welcoming spacious entrance. The living area was designed really well and in this apartment we decided to have a separate kitchen and this made the apartment feel so much spacious and bigger. The space upstairs was somewhat reduced due to the stairs and the entrance area so we felt by putting in an open plan kitchen diner would make the apartment feel cramped so we decided in this apartment to have a separate kitchen. Both the apartments incorporated lots of storage. We had desks and chairs for working from home as well. How did I finance this house? I purchased this house on a bridge, completed the works, created two separate leases for each of the apartments and moved the freehold into my personal name as generally lenders don't like leaseholders to be the same as the freeholders. How did I refinance this property? I refinanced each of the flats onto a buy-to-let mortgage having created separate leases for each of the apartments. Final numbers on this house. The overall valuation for the two flats came in at £410,000. This meant that on the refinance onto the buy -to mortgages, we ended up with each flat costing us £21,000. The money left in was £42,000, so £21,000 per flat. The return on investment was 33%. If we compare that to a normal buy -to -let investor, the money left in would have been £124,600 with a return of investment of 11%. Still a very good return. The multiplier for this project was 2.9, which means that I could have completed three projects for every one completed by a normal buy to let investor using our model. Not bad. The B4R model has allowed me to buy nearly three times the number of apartments when compared to the traditional way of investing and the way I used to invest. It has allowed me to add more value over and above a normal refurbishment, which helps to reduce the uncertainty of a down valuation as you are creating a significant amount of uplift. You Using the B4R model, I've converted one bedroom flats into two bedroom flats, houses into two flats, and I'm in the process of converting a mixed use commercial building into four flats. The biggest advantage of investing in property as an asset class is leverage. Literally no other asset class offers this opportunity, not even gold. For example, to buy an investment property worth £100,000, I only need to come up with 25%, so £25,000. Yes, I will need some additional funds for the stamp duty, legal fees, and then 
then the cost for any refurbishment works. But depending on what I do to that property, I can reduce even further the amount I've invested in that property by using the B4R property investing model. The model I usually follow is to buy on a bridge, apply the B4R property investing model and refinance onto a buy to let mortgage. Which is better? So is Warren Buffett right? Is gold not a good investment? I would have to agree with him. It's too stressful worrying about where you left it and even more stressful trying to sell it. Is property a lousy investment? I would agree with him if you are buying as a traditional investor, but I would definitely disagree with him if buying using the B4R approach. The B4R approach allows you to force the capital appreciation much sooner, allows you to use the art of leverage and reduces your chances of a down valuation. In the same way Warren Buffett is looking for underpriced companies that are poised for growth, I am looking for properties that are ripe for the B4R property investing model, which I can add a significant amount of value to in a short space of time. Gold biscuit or bricks and mortar? What are your thoughts? Looking to start your own property portfolio or take it to the next level using the B4R property investing model? Then check out RavindaAudula.com. I have just launched a free course on there called the Property Discovery Masterclass.